After all of your comments about the Sega Genesis controller in one of my previous videos, I thought I would go pull like every controller I had in my arsenal and explain what is safe for the Commodore 64 and what might be not so safe for the Commodore 64. Stick around. Let's go! Let's go into the Bonnaroo world! So let's get started. For those of you who don't want to reminisce about the old days, um, I'll tell you flat out what you do not want to use on the Commodore 64 are Genesis controllers, Sega Master System controllers, anything for the Atari 7800, no Odyssey, no ColecoVision, no Intellivision. They all have the exact same plug, but the wiring is different, and that's where our problem is. So if you want to know the technical details, I'll put something up on the screen right now that will show you why, right? But most of you don't really care about the why, it's just what can I use and what can I not use? So those are the things you don't want to use. In this case, um, the uh, Sega Genesis controllers are not your friends, so we're going to put those to the side. They could work. They may never have a problem, but at some point they could, so let's not. This is the 8-Bitto um, M30. I grabbed this one just for fun before I knew about Sega Genesis and its problems. And obviously this requires power that's coming from a pin that the Commodore 64 does not provide. So this isn't probably gonna blow anything up because it just plain doesn't work. So that ends up going back to Amazon because I certainly don't have any use for it otherwise. So what can you use? If I told you you can't use Intellivision, you can't use ColecoVision, you can't use Odyssey, you can't use NES or Modified, you can't do any of that stuff, but what can you do? Okay, so obviously there are controllers from the great old days of gaming such as this actual Commodore controller. And uh, it's much like the Atari 2600 controller, which by the way, anything for the Atari 2600, good to go. This is easily one of the more uncomfortable controllers. And it's, of course, it's actually branded. And that makes it even worse. So this is safe, but I don't know if I'd actually use it. These are cool. I forgot I had these. I found these in a box. These are called the power sticks. And my big man hands are absolutely not liking this, but there are, um, there is the ability to use this either way, so you can use it left or right-handed, which is pretty cool. Ambidextrous stuff wasn't really thought about back then. And these things are kind of stiff and have a lot of throw, but I think they came in a two-pack, so you and your friend get to go in and play. But again, uh, if you've got these big man hands like me, these might not be very comfortable. Still kind of fun. This is a pro stick, and this is another one I picked up that I sort of forgot about, uh, and it works. I think I got this for my um, Amiga. This is one of those weird ones, has a single button on top. So my big man hands are good with this, right? But, and you can use this either way. Um, but yeah, very clicky, micro sticky. By the way, if you wanna see any of these opened up, if you want me to do like a deep dive on any of them, leave a comment down below. Um, but in the meantime, this is a safe one if you happen to run across one. Not very common though. Um, now, some of the more common ones you're gonna see, of course, are the ones I talked about, like the TAC-2. This is my favorite controller of all time for the Commodore 64. We talked about this at length in another video. So we don't really need to talk about that. But this is one that I managed to pick up. Oh, I see the rubber band broke, how oh, nice. This is one I picked up, the Epix XJ. Um, this was a fan favorite. I'm not a big fan of that. I know people love micro switches, but damn, can you imagine like playing a game like this for a couple of hours and you have to listen to that thing the whole time? Yeah, not my favorite, but it did have auto fire, which by the way works, I played Gyrus with it. And uh, this one of course is also safe because it was made for the Commodore 64, and it works, of course, on the Amiga. Speaking of Amiga, there are two controllers. Get this rubber band out of the way. There are two controllers, the uh, infamous Boomerang controller that came with the CD32, CD32. This is actually not a bad controller. From a comfort point of view, it's pretty comfortable, especially for big man hands like mine. So this is a pretty good controller. This is perfectly safe to use on your Commodore 64, but it was superseded well, sort of, by this Competition Pro controller. Both of these, by the way, can be had on eBay. It's not like they're impossible to find. You'll probably play, pay a premium for it now. But this was great. You had the turbo and auto fire and all that stuff. And this is much like um, that forbidden Sega Genesis controller, right? So you could tell there was a bit of a inspiration, if you will. So um, yeah, no Genesis control. All right, but so yeah, this competition pad is great if you can lay your hands on one of these, highly recommended. All right, so you're saying, Shane, geez, not one of these controllers came out in the last 10 years, man. So yeah, this is great. These are all compatible. Thank you so much for your help. 
What can I buy now? I want to have a controller right now that I don't have to go to eBay for and worry that it's not gonna work or take it apart and clean it like you did the TAC 2s. I need something real, I need something more real. Well, guess what? Brand new controller in the box, available, believe it or not, first overnight shipping on Amazon, but I've actually seen these for sale at my local retro gaming store, right? This was like, uh, it's like 13 bucks, so it's cheap enough to do the job, but but if you buy it locally, you're gonna pay more. Um, but this is available, this is something brand new that you can buy today that is totally safe and compatible with the Commodore 64. Let's open it up real quick. We'll make this sort of a dual deal. We'll look at this controller along uh, with these other ones. All right, obviously I haven't opened it up yet, but I've read plenty of reviews about them, talked to other folks about them. That's how I know that this is a good deal. Plus it says Atari 2600 right on there. Atari 2600, instantly safe. And it does share a lot of DNA with the Atari 2600, doesn't it? But they were smart, they rounded these off, right? One of the things that made these uncomfortable to hold was these pointed edges, ambidextrous, same sort of size and, and uh, uh, weight. And there's no, there's no frills, there's no, there's no auto fires or anything like that, just a nice long serviceable cable. These buttons feel absolutely great. The stick is got a little bit more throw in it that I would have liked, but I'm so used to the TAC too. But this feels a lot better than the Atari 2600 version of the uh, basically the same controller. And again, you can get this now, today, brand new, in the box, ready to roll, no questions asked. And this has a nice long cable. And uh, we'll just pop this guy right in here. Oh, you can see, see the fire button is actually being a space bar. That means it's mapped to port one. Useless trivia. So let's take a look. Of course, we'll do a little gyrus action with it, which is perfect for this type of controller. Yeah, it's even got the wood grain on it. And you know, listen, for like 13 bucks, it, this is a good deal. Now at my local retro store, it was 20 bucks. Maybe not quite as good of a deal. If you can wait a day, you know, use Amazon, but if not, maybe your local retro store has them. This is the Trooper, by the way. Trooper Premium Controller. Gotta get, uh, this is my non-cartridge version, so it's got the trainer and everything on it. Now, let's take a look. Just so happens I needed port one, so we're good. Oh, hey, this feels good. This is all right. I mean, are there better controllers? This is a fairly cheap controller, but it's 12 bucks. What do you want? But this is something you can have today, guaranteed safe. Doing all right with it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. So anyway, there you have it. Um, don't need that playing in the background. So there you have it. This is the, this is the, um, uh, again, this is the Trooper premium controller from Hyperkin, available on Amazon. I'm sure it's available in other countries on Amazon. This should not be a difficult controller to get. If you have your old Atari 2600s, um, your old Commodore Amiga, your old Commodore 64 controllers, they're still good to go. But if you gotta have the new, new stock, not the new old stock or the old, old stock, this is your guy. This is your guy. So now you know. Now, one more thing. Now, I've ordered this, but I didn't have it in time for the show. Uh, I will do a follow-up. This controller can be made safe using a little dongle. I'm going to put something up on the screen for you to see. You could make your own. You could order it from eBay. It's a little pricey if you get one that's already assembled and ready to go. But it does more than just make this safe to play. It also maps one of these buttons to up. So if you have one of those single player game buttons like Super Frog or Turrican, where up is jump and, and basically in this case, B would be fire, one of the buttons can be remapped to up so that you can have jump and fire in actual button form. So that could be really worthwhile if you're not, even if you have one of these controllers and you have a Genesis controller and you don't wanna have only single button functionality, I think that being able to have a Genesis controller with that dongle, and again, I'll have some uh, links for you to get one. Uh, I think that would be probably opportune, especially if you have games that you play that uh, that need that up or that space bar to get around. So there you go. Listen, um, 
what's your favorite controller? I mean, this whole group of stuff, what's your favorite controller? Which ones did I not show? Probably the bat handle. Everyone loves those Wiccos. I was never a fan. Did not have a Wicco in the house and I couldn't find one in time for the video. So yeah, what was your favorite? Was it the Wicco bat handle? Was it the old standard Atari controller? Or maybe uh, you were using these uh, Amiga controllers. Um, these were plentiful, especially when the CD32 was being uh, discounted highly. You could get these controllers for practically peanuts. So almost everyone who has an Amiga has got one of those sitting around somewhere. Like what we're doing, like, subscribe, hype the video if you happen to have that, go to your mobile app, bring the video up. If you have a little hype thing on the bottom, go ahead and do that. Apparently that's the new big thing from YouTube that will help the uh, video grow. That's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shane Armand Take care and we'll see you next time.